like a cloud of dust and the hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail Silver. Away! The Lone Ranger and Tonto had spent several days in the little Spanish mission, visiting their good friend, the Padre. Rested and refreshed, they were ready to leave. Scout and Silver were saddled and waiting, and so was Victor, the son of Silver. This was the horse that belonged to Dan Reed, the teenage nephew of the Lone Ranger. You are to meet Dan Reed? Yes, Padre. That's why Victor is with us. When Dan has a school vacation, he's as eager to see his horse as he is Tonto and me. <laughs> Uh, we meet Dan at Roaring River. You say Roaring River? Yes, Padre. Dan is to travel by stagecoach as far as Roaring River. Have you heard anything about the town? What I hear, amigo, is not good. Mm, last time we were there, it was played. Yes, Tonto and I liked the town. There were good homes, stores, a newspaper, a church, and a school. How long ago, senor? Oh, three years. That was before Rance Desmond came there. Rance Desmond? I've never heard of him. He came from the east to Roaring River. He hopes to gain control of the town, and he is making progress. Many people stand in fear of him. Well, if he gains control of the town, he might expand his power to control the state. Then with the power to levy taxes, he could reward his friends and break those who try to oppose him. Yes, Desmond must be stopped before he gets too big. Glad you told me about him. You ready, Tonto? Uh, you ready, uh, me, me, Victor. Good luck to you. Uh, thanks, Padre. We'll be back. Adios. Hasta mañana. In due time, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the vicinity of Roaring River and made camp in a woods. The masked man waited there while the Indian went into town to inquire about the expected arrival of the stagecoach. Meanwhile, Sheriff Becker stormed into the office of Cal Collins, the publisher of the newspaper. When a man slams a door like that, he's out of sorts, I always say. And you can say it again, Collins. Is it something I wrote or something you wait? You know blame well what it is, Collins. It's this here newspaper you just circulated. Uh, what about it, Sheriff Becker? You tell about my son Dave coming back from the east. Is that offensive to you? Then you go on to tell how he's been studying law and studying police work. And you say when he returns to Roaring River, he'll help me jail some crooks. Isn't that true? 
Dave's been away to school for about uh, four years, hasn't he? Yes, but that's... Dave the... will surely know some modern methods of dealing with criminals. Beside the point. You say there's plenty of work for Dave to do in Roaring River. You say crooks stay out of jail because they're too smart for me. I didn't say that yet. Show me a crook that's not in jail. Just name one. Well, the biggest crook in this part of the country is Rance Desmond. Oh, what law has he broken? Well, it's not a case of actually breaking the law. There, you see. Oh, Rance Desmond's a double-dealing polecat. He's a conniving sidewinder. I admit that. But he hasn't broken the law. And until he does, he can't be jailed. Desmond swindled Jake Peterson. Jake went to Desmond with the cash to pay off the mortgage on his property. It was just an hour before the deadline. Yes, I heard about that. Desmond refused to take the paper money because it specified in the mortgage it was to be paid in gold. I know. That was a shady deal. Uh, but it was legal. Jake lost some of the most valuable property in town because he couldn't raise the cash in gold coin before the mortgage expired. Desmond secured that property for a tenth of its value. Now, that was only one deal. There were others, many others. I know all about Rats Desmond's tricks. You must have told your son about them. Sure I did. I wrote lots of letters today telling how Desmond was getting a, a stranglehold on people here in town. But I said, and still say, Desmond has stayed within the letter of the law. And you've no right to say I neglected my duties as sheriff. I didn't say that. You said Dave would do what I had failed to do. You said he'd bring the means to jail, Rance Desmond. Sheriff, that article doesn't mention Desmond. Oh, now you're splitting hairs. Maybe you didn't mention him by name, but everyone in town knows who you meant when you said... <laughs> the man from Mississippi who... Uh, who? Uh, what in tarnation was the rest of it? Let me find it here in the paper. Who, oh, since becoming a member of our community... What? You... Lance Desmond. Why well, didn't hear you open the door? Has methodically spread his power and influence like the tentacles of a slimy octopus. Shall I go on? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll finish it for you, Desmond. No trick of cunning is too low. Human rights, moral principles, business ethics, and fair play are empty words. This man and his boot-licking followers have but one rule to govern their operations. They stay within the written law. You, of course, had me in mind when you wrote that. You must think the description fits you. Don't let him call you a slimy octopus, Desmond. Smash his nose for it. Bust his teeth. And then, Sheriff, he could arrest me for assault and battery. You're doggone right I could. And I would. <laughs> I didn't come here to resent the article. I'm not interested in Collins' literary bills. You didn't state your business, did you? Business. Oh, yes, that's it. I came to inspect this newspaper equipment. Buy a new printing press. How are you fixed for tight, Collins? None of your business. It will be my business, unless you repay the money you borrowed. What? what money? The money you borrowed from the bank to pay for new equipment. You gave the banker your note, and you used the equipment as security. I paid off part of that note. The banker promised to renew the loan for the balance. Since this morning, the banker's had nothing to say about it. He sold the note to me. You? Yeah. So now you're indebted to me, Carl. And I expect payment in full when the note comes due on the first of the month. Otherwise, I'll have to take possession of your printing press and other equipment. Really, the underhanded scheme. An ornery banker. I'm sure you understand my position, Collins. You can hardly expect me to use my own cash to finance the publication of a paper that is antagonistic. Good day. By the way, Collins. That new equipment I may decide to publish a paper of my own. So I might hire you as office boy. <laughs> I never figured Banker Kent would do that to me. <laughs> Why, only last week he told me not to worry. He said he'd extend the note as long as I wanted if I just paid the interest. Desmond probably offered a high price for the note. You could well afford to. Yes, money talks where the banker is concerned. Maybe you can borrow cash somewhere else and pay off Desmond. No, no, not a chance. I have nothing to offer as security. Besides, who has cash to lend me? John, I wish I could help you. Maybe Dave will know of a legal angle when he gets here. <coughs> Sheriff, I'd, I'd better tell you about your son. Huh? 
What about him? Dave is here. Here? In town? Here in this building. What? In my living quarters in the back. Dave. Dave, come on. Well, uh, Paul, I never heard... If this don't beat all. Hello, Dad. Dave, uh, come here, son. Oh, gone, you look good. Son of you, Dad. How long have you been in town? Three days. What? Three days? A friend of mine came this way with a freight cargo, so I traveled with him instead of our state. And you didn't let me know? I came to Cal Collins late one night. We made some plans. And since then, I've been in his living quarters. A fine thing. My own son and my best friend conspiring to keep me in the dark. Why'd you hide out from me? What's the idea of spending three days in this stove in shack instead of coming home where you belong? <laughs> now, hold on, Dad. I'll tell you why I did it. You better have mighty good reason. I declare I never heard of such a thing. I understood from your letters that you wanted a jail ranch, Desmond. Oh, I do. He's used all kinds of tricks to get men under his thumb. Getting too powerful. Paper said you had evidence to jail him. I haven't, Ed. I asked Cal to print that because I wanted Desmond to think I had evidence to jail him. I stayed undercover because I had a plan. It wouldn't work if Desmond knew I was in town. Mm. No plan will work if Desmond's never broken the law. Maybe he has broken the law. We don't know what he did before he came to Roaring River. Uh, what's your plan? We'll ride east to meet the stage. I'll go on board. You ride nearby, but stay out of sight. Rance Desmond may rob the stage to get the evidence he thinks I carry. He wouldn't do it himself. He'd send someone to do it for him. Even so, you could capture the crooks. Then maybe they'd talk and involve Desmond to save their own necks. Uh, might work. If Desmond doesn't make a move, there's no harm done. And if he does... I'll jail him. <laughs> Otto learned that the stage was expected to arrive from the east that evening. He secured a copy of the newspaper and glanced through it until he saw the item about the sheriff's son. He read it twice, then abandoned his plans to learn more about Rents Desmond. He leaped to the saddle and hurried out of town to the camp of the Lone Ranger. Oh, scout, no fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. You're back earlier than I expected, Toto. Ah, uh, here. You read this. Item in the paper? Ah, uh, uh, this part. Oh? Yeah. And while you read, me saddle silver. You maybe want to ride away quick. <clears throat> stagecoach to do in town tonight. Dan Reed on stagecoach. And so is the sheriff's son. Isn't that right? And son of sheriff bring evidence to jail crook. The name of the crook isn't mentioned. It must mean Rance Desmond. <laughs> Otto, Desmond may send men to stop that stage and get the sheriff's son. Or at least the evidence he carries. That's right. There may be gunplay. Uh, and Dan Reed on that stagecoach. Finish with Silver. I'll settle Dan's horse. We ride east and meet the stage. In town at that moment, Rance Desmond talked to one of his followers, a cruel-faced man who wore two guns. I see. I want you to start at once and ride east along the stage trail. Take Spike with you. To meet the stage, down boy. Yes. The sheriff's son will be on board. He's bringing some sort of evidence against me. You suppose he has proof you embezzled cash from the bank where you worked in Biloxi? All I know is what I saw in the paper. Or maybe he's learned you're the one who used Ford's credentials to work as a tax collector in Natchez. I'll tell you, I don't know. Don't waste any more time. Find Spike and right east to meet the stage. Make sure Dave Becker doesn't reach here with the evidence. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Sheriff and Dave were riding east from Roaring River, following the winding stagecoach trail as it snaked through the mountains. 
Miles behind these two, Grant Desmond's men rode over the same devious route. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had ridden in an almost straight line from their camp. By taking shortcuts over the mountains, they reached the stagecoach trail far to the east of the sheriff and his son. Presently, they rounded the bend and saw the stage approaching. Stop here, Tonto. Oh, oh, yeah, hold yeah, on, Tonto. Hold it, Me hope damn read on board. I'm sure he will be. I'll signal for the driver to stop. Empty mask. Let me think this hold up. Doesn't matter what he thinks as long as he stops. You must sorry. Yeah. Guard on stage. Only driver. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. If this is a hold up, you've made a poor choice. Got either cash or mail. It's no hold up, driver. <laughs> Come on, Dan, bring your bag out of there, will you? Yes, sir. Golly, this is a surprise. Driver, did you have another passenger? No. Nope. All right, get going. Hey, but that boy. He's traveling with us. Get going. Right. Needn't wave a gun. I'm a going. Here, that one. Here. Oh, it's good to see you. And you, Tano. I'm glad to see you, Dan. And Victor. Oh, golly, you remembers me, don't you, fellas? Dan, I thought there'd be another passenger. No, no. I'm the only one. Did anyone stop the stagecoach and ask questions about Dave Becker? No, sir. No one stopped the stage. All right, then. Tie your bag behind the saddle and we'll take you to our camp. driver of the stage continued along the road toward Roaring River. But he had traveled only a few miles when he saw the sheriff and Dave approaching. They drew rein. Then the sheriff signaled for the stage to halt. Oh, oh there. Oh. Howdy, sheriff. Glad to see you. You remember my son, Dave, don't you, Slim? Hello, Slim. Dave! Sakes alive, I'd hardly know you. Been a long time since you went east. I didn't know you were back. I don't see any passengers inside. Not now, Sheriff. Not now. You mean you did have? I had one passenger, a boy. A few years younger than your son. Hey. Where, where is he? Well, a couple of men stopped me on the trail. Hear that, Dave? Yeah. Go on, go on, Slim. What happened? Well, those men, uh, one was masked, the other was an Indian. They had an extra horse with them. And they told the boy to ride with them. And you let him go? Well, uh, Sheriff, they, they acted like they were friendly. Friendly, my eye. Well, they, they seemed to know each other. Besides, a masked man waved me on with a gun. Oh, no, he's a gunslinger. Confound it, Dave. You see what your ideas have led to? Those crooks think they've captured you. Dan, we wanted evidence to jail him. Well, if they abducted that boy, they've broken the law. It's the same as if they robbed me. No, it isn't the same. We figured on catching them red-handed. Now we've got to find them, then prove a case against them. Just let me get my hands on them. I'll make them admit the truth, and I'll make them admit that Rance Desmond hired them. What's that about Rance Desmond? You, Slim, listen to me. Yes, sir. You're to forget we mentioned Rance Desmond. In fact, you're to forget everything that happened. Don't say a word about a masked man stopping the stage. All right, sir. Where did it happen? Just a few miles back. Just this side of Red Rock there. That's all I want to know. Come on, Dave. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Get up there. When the sheriff and his son reached the place where the Lone Ranger and Tonto had stopped the stage, they found sharply defined imprints of hoops in the soft ground beside the trail. At first, the tracks were easy to follow, but when the sheriff and his son reached the rocky hills, there were many places where hoop marks were not noticeable. Finally, Dave and the sheriff entered a wood south of the town of Roaring River. The veteran lawman called a halt, dismounted, threw a gun, and moved ahead alone and silently. In a clearing, he saw the masked man, Toto, and Dan Reed. Get your hands up, you covered. Who's that? I'm showing myself. Stand frozen, all of you. Sure. You're all going right. Come on, Dave. Bring the horses and hold the gun ready. If one of you makes a move, I'll shoot. Good work, Ted. Sure. You've more reason to hold a gun on us. You and the Indian are under arrest for abducting that boy from a stagecoach. Is that what you think? Yes. And Rent Stesman hired you to do it. You made a mistake. You're the one who made the mistake when you grabbed that boy, thinking he was my son, coming from the east with evidence to jail Desmond. I'll keep him covered, Dave. You take their guns and unmask that man. Oh, one minute. Sheriff, Rance Desmond did not hire me, and we didn't abduct that boy. These are my friends. I'll prove it, Sheriff. Dan Reed stepped forward, placing himself directly between the sheriff and the masked man. The Lone Ranger tensed, ready to leap. Hold on, boy. You're in my line of fire. Look out. I'll take the gun. The Lone Ranger rushed forward. The sheriff couldn't fire without danger of hitting Dan Reed. Dan advanced close to the sheriff, then suddenly grabbed the lawman's gun arm. In that instant, the masked man leaped and seized the sheriff's gun. Dave tried to draw his own weapon, but Toto was upon him. Oh, I'll take that, Sheriff. Let go. Let go. 
Dad Raddit. Get hands up. There. Now I'll take charge. Dad Raddit, luck, you fool boy. Ready. If you haven't stepped in my but line sure, of fire, now these critters have the drop on it. Sheriff, calm down and listen for a minute. I tried to tell you, Sheriff, these are my friends. I was planning to meet them in Roaring River. You, you really mean the masked man, the Indian, they're your friends? That's what I'm trying to tell you. We went to meet the stage because we saw an item in the paper about your son and evidence. Oh. I thought Dad Wu would try to capture your son. So would we. And there might have been gunplay. I didn't want Dan in the midst of it. Well, now you have the drop on us. I'll return your gun. Uh, here and yours, Dave. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Doggone, I thought sure we'd have evidence against Rance Desmond when we persuaded you to talk. Doesn't your son have the evidence? If he had, there'd have been no need for that item in the paper. What's more, I wouldn't be wasting time here. I'd be throwing Desmond behind bars. That's where I'd like to see him. Sheriff, we're both on the same side. Maybe there's still a way to trap Rance Desmond. Desmond was at the station when the stage arrived. He grinned inwardly when they saw no passenger. He thought it odd that the driver said nothing of an incident on the trail, but made no comment. He went to his office and waited. Sometime later, Lacey and the other gunman entered. Boss, we drew a blank. He wasn't on the stage. You sure? Wasn't any passenger. We figured there's no point in stopping the stage unless we were sure of getting what we wanted, so we hid alongside the trail and watched. You let the stage go by? Sure. We could have caught it if we'd have seen our man. But we didn't, so we let it go. Mm. I wonder where the sheriff's son is. Maybe he missed the stage. Maybe he'll come on the next one. Maybe. We'll have to watch for him. Someone at the door. Come in. Boy. What do you want, boy? I'm looking for the sheriff. His office is across the street. Oh, yes, sir, I know that. I went there, but no one was around. I thought you might know where I can find him. We don't know anything about it. Why do you want the sheriff? Well, I have an envelope. Dave Becker handed it Dave to me. Dave Becker, sheriff's son? Yes, sir. Spike, close that door. Now then, son, you say Dave Becker handed you an envelope. That's right. He was supposed to be on the stagecoach today. Oh, he wasn't on the stagecoach. I, I met him east of here. He handed me this large envelope and asked me to give it to his father, the sheriff. How did you get here? I rode my horses up front. Well, just leave that envelope with me. I'll see that the sheriff gets it. Dave, well, he told me to give it to the sheriff, no one else. Did he tell you what's in it? No, sir, but he said it was important. It has something to do with putting a man in jail. Hey, boss, you hear that? You're a reliable young man. What's your name? Dan Reed. Know anyone in Roaring River? No, sir. Reed, I'll take that envelope. But Dave told you me You heard, Mr. Desmond. You... Hey, give me that. It's for the sheriff. Give it here. Shut up and move aside. Holy spike. Burn. <laughs> Let me go. Here you are, boss. Yes, there's no use. Yeah. When do the sheriff hear of this? Keep him quiet. You Don't let him yell. I got my hand over his mouth. Gag him. And tie his hands and feet. Hold his hands, Spike. I'll shove a gag into his face. Yeah, if you can't hold him, slug him on the head. I'll hold him. Hurry with that gag. Yeah, this will keep him quiet. What do we do with him, boss? We can't let him go. We'll hold him here until after dark. Then find a way to get rid of him. I'll lock this door. How about the back door? I'll lock that one, too. Hold his hands closer together, Spike, so I can try it. What's going on in here? Hey, sir. Get him up, Sheriff. Hey. What's the idea of sneaking in through the back room? I didn't sneak in. I heard a commotion while I was behind the building. Well, keep your hands up. Take his gun, Lacey. Yeah, one second, boss. Soon as I finish tying the kit. Aren't you getting careless, Desmond? I never saw you handling the gun. There's a lot you never saw. And capture that boy. Desmond, I'm ordering you to lower your gun and release that boy. It's jail if you don't. You'll never have the chance to jail me. Yeah, that'll hold the kid. Now disarm the sheriff and fasten his wrist with his own handcuffs. Hey, boss, we're getting into deep water. That's right, Lacey. I don't know what that boy will have to say, but it looks like you three will go to jail. You better settle for that. Capture me and you'll have to kill me. For that, you'll hang. Boss, I didn't figure on anything like this. Shut up, Spike. We can't back out now. If this lawman gets his hands on that envelope, I'll be sent to face charges in Biloxi. So that's where you're wanted. Boss, the law in Biloxi isn't looking for Spike and me. You're asking us to face hanging charges. Do two rats turn on me, and I'll tell an up-to-jail both of you for life. Well, what's the idea? Leave to me. 
No one will ever know what became of the sheriff or that boy. Guess again, Rance. I didn't come through that back door alone. Well, that's right. That boy's oh. friends came with me. Likewise, my son. We'll take over. Oh. Desmond's gun was shot from his hand by the masked man who leaped through the door. Lacey reached for a gun, but the sheriff beat him to the draw. Oh, my son. Now, freeze, or I'll bust your other arm. You're covered, Spike. Don't shoot. I'm raising my hand. It's a frame-up. It's a trick. Yep, yeah, that's right, Rams. Otto, take Spike's gun. I'll untie it, Dad. Uh-huh. I'll help you cover him, Dad. The sheriff handcuffed Rance Desmond while Tonto collected the weapons. Then Spike and Lacey were tied. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger freed Dan Reed. Well, you did fine, Dan. Oh, he sure did. Dan, you played a dangerous part. Oh, it wasn't dangerous, Sheriff. With you and Dave and my friends right in the back room, ready to have... But you were back there all the time. We came in the back door while Dan came in the front. We're witnesses to the fact that you stole that envelope, Rams. I'll open it and take back the cash I put inside. What? Well, that's nothing but money. Not money, Desmond. And you stole it. Well, that we're arresting you and your pals. Oh, there'll be a lot more charges to come. Then the charges in Biloxi? Well, <laughs> I reckon you were cool. Uh, Sheriff, you might say the same for Toto, Dan, and me. Yes, I think we're through as far as Desmond is concerned. Oh, I don't leave. Stick around. Let the folks of Roaring River show the gratitude. Thanks. Thanks, but we're anxious to reach camp. Well, well, thanks. Thanks for everything. Adios. 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 <laughs> well, Desmond, you thought you were getting mighty big and powerful, didn't you? Oh, men like you were cut down mighty sudden when you meet a really big man, like the Lone Ranger. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. A part of The Lone Ranger is played by Grace Beamer. Uh-huh.